let's have a check-in. How are we dealing with uh, the lack of sleep because of the time change over the weekend? Here to talk about how to cope with sleep disruption. Welcome back, Dr. Yvette Liu. Thank you. So what are the symptoms of sleep deprivation? Sleep disruption can, can last for as long as one week after the time change. So sleep deprivation can, the symptoms can include poor sleep quality, uh, difficulty falling asleep, difficulty waking up or sleep tiredness during the day. I guess there's a difference between deprivation and disruption exactly. and disruption is what we're dealing with. Yeah, that's what we're dealing with this week. Deprivation can happen from sleep disruption. Ah, yes. okay. And so now we've we've analyzed ourselves, we go, yeah, that is me, but there are particular people that may suffer more today. Yes, people who sleep poorly normally, people who have a sleep debt, so who are already sleep deprived, children can suffer more, and people who are evening people. So morning people do Feel better with the change to daylight saving time, but evening people have more difficulty. So we've heard this morning, uh, even from Greg and News, that there are studies that show, and we hear it every year, yes. uh, you know, traffic conditions and accidents happen because people um, are having a sleep disruption in their lives. Yes. But what about how it impacts our behavior at work? Definitely there is disruption at work as well. There are more workplace accidents. Studies have shown that test scores worsen for a week after the sleep change. There's also increased number of suicides and heart attacks What about for, for the Monday after the well, time change. Uh Sorry, I, my head just shook there. Yeah. With heart attacks? Heart attacks and suicides have been noted on the Monday after the time change. And what, why? It may be related to fatigue. Most likely it's related to fatigue, decreased concentration, decreased attention, and the resulting increase in stress hormones. What about the children? I mean, my son Oz went to sleep last night completely unaware of the time change, but was uncharacteristically emotional. Uh, how do kids react to the time change and how can we help them? Children are more sensitive to the time change. So you might notice that your children are more irritable or more tired for, for about a week this week. So have extra patience with them. And what we can do is we can adjust their sleep time by 15 minutes each night and that will help them more easily adapt to the time change. So uh, uh, Dr. Liu, I saw a tweet from one of my workmates this morning, yes. Rian Ford from News 1130. Good morning, Rian. And he said, great, I'm going to spend the most lovely day of the year so far napping. And mm -hmm. that is the question, do we nap or do we not nap in order to catch up? So generally, we tell people not to nap for more than 20 to 30 minutes, especially if you have insomnia. Some people can take longer naps if they have a good sleep cycle and their, their sleep is, is quite regulated. But if you have difficulty sleeping, if you're having sleep disruption, then it's probably better better just to keep it to 20 to 30 minutes so you don't disrupt your circadian cycle. Now some people may need more sleep this week, especially if they do have a sleep debt or if they're feeling extra tired. Or sick. Yes, if they're sick, then they, they probably will benefit from increased sleep because your body needs that. So you just mentioned a second ago, circadian... Circadian rhythm. And does that have to do with, you know, the lights and things like that? Exactly. So that's your day-night rhythm. It's your body's natural cycle. Your body secretes more hormones at different times of the day. So to help you sleep properly, you want to support your circadian rhythm. So that means getting out into natural light during the daytime and turning down the lights in the evening so your body doesn't get confused about what is night and what is day. Another thing that can help is avoiding lighted screens because the light from the screens can activate the centers in your brain that keep you awake and can also suppress melatonin, which helps you to fall asleep. And that's all part of having good sleep hygiene. Yes, sleep hygiene is a set of behaviors that help you get better sleep. So some of the other things things include no caffeine after early afternoon, avoiding smoking and coffee, having a comfortable bed, a quiet environment, a dark environment, getting some exercise, those kinds of things. Thank you so much for joining us. I know a lot of us, uh, BT viewers included, really appreciate these tips on how to cope with the time change. Stick around. Come